What's your <coughs> first memory as a fan of coming to Oakwell? You've got Oakwell behind you, looking good. What's your first memory? All the team actually came to our school at Royston, Gordon Owens era, and uh, did a training session on the school pitch and then gave a lot of tickets away and we all came with parents and that school kids and I think I'd have been about six or seven something like that but then from around 84, 85 I was when I started coming regular and probably 87 was when I became a season ticket holder and then never missed like reserve games or first team games and sitting in the west stand as it was then where we couldn't see every part of the pitch because of the pulse and it's still not changing. <laughs> As a fan, speaking as a fan purely, what's your best memory of a Barnsley game? Cup run where we played Stoke, and we played Stoke about three times with the Pink Panthers. That, that was big because I think I'd just started standing in Ponty and then. So I came with my granddad and uh, he'd sit in the West Stand with my brother and I'd go into Ponty and we were mates. So that, that Cup run and going away to Leicester when we beat Leicester 2 1 at Filbert Street as it was, they were good because they were the different games in the FA Cup. Mm. It, maybe lost its sparkle a little bit now or priority is on the league or the Premier League but they were good things and then the season when we thought we'd got in the playoffs where we all everyone's on the pitch after I think Brighton yeah Brighton, Brighton scored yeah. in the last minute Brighton That's yeah right. and yeah. Uh, that was Mel Machin weren't it Mel Machin was yeah. in charge and, uh, and we had a good side and so that was a that was a good memory then to be honest sort of not long after that took a couple of scenes later that's when I was always playing Saturdays and football became sort of a job for me and games are coming down to Oakwell regularly, few and far between. I always knew I'd play for Barnes, it's weird, you call it naivety, so I just always thought I would. I came close when I left Man United as an 18 year old and Danny was in charge and I came on trial for two weeks and missed the FA Youth Cup final because I wanted to, to try and get a contract here. But he said no and knocked me back, so I don't let him forget that. <laughs> and then the next time I was probably close was the season I signed for for Sheffield Wednesday. I'd literally just gone and put pen to paper at, at Hillsborough. I came back, I was in my back garden at Mount Breton, and uh, an agent rang me up about coming to sign at Barnsley, and Paul Hart was manager. And I, I was stood in the back garden, actually looking at Oakwell, thinking, you've got to be taking a mickey, you know what I mean? I said, I've just signed, I've just signed at, at Wednesday. So that, that was on the same day. Uh, but I didn't have to wait, about 18 months later Paul Sturrock came in and told me the same thing that Barnes had come I was due to go and sign for Bristol City on the Friday afternoon I was going to drive down and, and see them. Gary Johnson was the manager and I was going to go down and sign there and Friday morning Paul Sturrock pulled me in training up Barnes has come in uh, we, we're happy, we've agreed everything I said can I go now so I think I just left training early and, and came straight up and signed for Andy Ritchie so it was a uh, Long time coming, but I don't know, I just always thought I'd get there. Can you remember your first game as a Red? Port Vale away, yeah. Lost 3-2. So we had a good local team with a good bond, so it was it was the start of, of a good time, really. And what are your memories of the Millennium and taking that penalty and subsequently getting promoted by the playoffs? Yeah, I can't remember too much about the game. I've probably watched it back a couple of times in, 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 in the last however many years but I can't really remember much about it do you know what I mean I probably couldn't even describe the goals or when they came but I remember bits about extra time when we had players going down with cramp and everything and we felt well I felt we, we were hanging on at that point and we needed it to get to penalties we had people down with cramp men down we made us subs and we were struggling but we hung in there they missed a couple of chances and we actually had a chance to win it near the end I think it was Reedy but it went to penalties and we'd been practicing them all the time anyway and I don't know, it was, it was surreal that, I don't know if it's because of the, the group that we had, didn't feel any pressure, speaking for myself personally and when I walked up, again this is a bit I can really remember, I just remember going, I was always going to put it to the keeper's right, my left and before I took my last step I saw the keeper going to his left and it just seemed just so slow motion, I just, maybe before I kicked off I've scored here. So that, that was strange, but then when we scored, going back to see the, the, the players in the halfway line and just saw a load of supporters from Royston, like where I'm from, who, and I just, I don't know, I just pure coincidence saw them in the crowd there straight away, straight after they scored, so that was a nice moment. And then there's, there's pictures where I was celebrating with some Royston lads at the other end of the, the pictures after we'd gone up, so they're my sort of memories. Me thinking back to when I was young, 
I, I always thought I'd be a better coach than, than a player, so I don't know, I just liked the game. I thought I'd do it, but then it was actually when I left Barnsley, I became a little bit disillusioned with it and the people within the game, and I, I stepped away from it and thought, I've done with football. Once I've finished playing, I've, I've finished. And a couple of friends at Bradford taught me, you know, just said some to Dave Weatherall and Wayne Jacob, just said, oh, why don't you? Why don't you do it? Why don't you carry on? Why don't you be the best you can be and, and surround yourself with good people and get rid of some of the idiots who you're not happy with? And I don't know, it just sort of resonated with me. I thought, you know what, they're right. Why should I let people who I think are fools and don't deserve to be in the game keep me away from it just because I don't want to deal with them? And then you walk a life and you have to deal with people like that. So, yeah, just something that stuck with me. So, went back to it. I'd already done badges previously, but they elapsed. I'd let them run out, so I'd, I literally had to start again. And that's when I started. What's your greatest achievement as a coach? I know there's been like brilliant achievements for yeah. Barnsley. Which yeah, well that's it. You know, best? well that's obviously his profile and what everyone knows about in the short time being head coach of Barnsley and you know double Wembley success. That I probably, I don't know. It. It's gone now. It seems strange, but I literally don't think about it. Don't look back. Obviously the pictures are all here now, and you think, oh, wow, yeah, that, we did all right, like type thing. That's how I think, but. It's been and it's gone, so we'd love to do it again. But I even think then, I think, it's been, it's gone, you have your part and it's done. So it's strange that, it, I don't know. I don't know if any, everyone would think like that. So yeah, fantastic, and if, if and when I do pack in, I'll probably look back with a bit more pride than I do now, because it's just, you're busy and you want to get the next thing. But in terms of what I get the most sort of joy out of, yeah, it's all about winning and, and having days like that, but that's the end goal, but being with the players, enjoy working with the players, being with the players, uh, pushing the players and the staff, and, and just seeing seeing messages sink. So I've got a real clear picture in my head of what I want the game to look like, and when you get that across, it's rewarding, um, and that's what I like. So you may have to change tack, you may have to be different with different people, but when you see it sinking, you see it get across, and you see it work, and that probably gives me the most satisfaction. What do you think football club brings to town, you know, like supporters? And yeah, well, I uh, so that's something I really am aware of because when um, I first took over in temporary charge and when we started doing well, do you know what I mean? And we win at Wembley and we're on the verge of the playoffs and everyone's talking about me taking the job and wherever I went in town, I couldn't get away from it. And, and, and I felt that people liked that connection with me and the club. You can't ever forget it's about the results, so the results and the field good factor comes from that. But the fact that then they had someone who'd been a season ticket holder, worked at the club with the kids and then now doing the first team and getting success, everyone was just on top of it. So I did make a conscious effort to, to embrace that and make sure we got, got the most out of it from a club point of view, so commercially, from, as we spoke about, that attachment between the club and the town. And from a performance point of view, it was important. So, there's, there was that attachment there, but there was also an attachment due to the way we were trying to play and the fans responded to that, they could see a team that they could be proud of. Not just by results, but how they were trying to play and the effort they were giving, the, the manner of the performances, how we were behaving. Um, so it was a real conscious effort to try and get the power of that as well, that, that, that community spirit, if you like, and everyone behind the team and the players. And that's, that's still part of our, uh, of our aim and it, it should be part of our heritage and then part of our future going forward because if we have to compete and be better than bigger clubs, bigger cities, clubs with bigger finance, we have to bridge the gap somehow and that's a big way having all everyone on board and everyone pulling in the same direction. Patrick Crine and our owner summed it up really well of late where he said it is it is part of the heritage. We and the current ownership acknowledge that this football club belongs to the town and the people and the decisions that we make have a big impact on people's lives and we've tried to bring the club back into not only the community but into the hearts of the town as well and I think you can only do that if it stems from the top so that comment about being in, in the heritage is really really important if you ask big clubs in the Premier League they'd say the same but if you ask the local people of that area they'd be saying that a lot of that's been lost and I think we're trying to reconnect and give that back at the moment.